It is the Wednesday after the 500, and man, what a race, what an event, what a month. Um, I first just want to say thank you uh, so much for partnering with us this month. Um, I hope you got to see through our 21-day prayer challenge and some of the other initiatives that we did of just the amount of people that we get to serve in this ministry. Um, it's not just the drivers, it's not just the crews, but we're talking officials, team owners. I mean, you name it, the list goes on and on. And so thank you so much for praying along with us. Throughout this month, I have to say, in my seven years of being a part of this ministry, uh, this month was by far the most effective. Um, it was incredible, the doors that God opened, and I attribute that to you um, and your prayers, your partnership. You know, another part of this month of ministry that we initiated was to raise $10,000. As many of you know, um, the cost of travel has increased significantly, and so we needed to compensate for some of that within our budget and um, you know this whole ministry exists because of people like you partnering financially to help keep us at the races and um, still waiting on the final numbers to come in but if you partnered with us in that way through your giving hey just want to say thank you again um, it's not just chuck and i at the racetrack doing ministry uh, that you truly are a part of this with us so thank you thank you thank you for that um, and a big congrats to marcus and his team for the big win on Sunday. But hey, we're gonna continue our journey uh, through the book of Luke. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm no longer at the Speedway, but if you got to see, if you didn't see last week, check it out. Chuck had an incredible one uh, coming to you from the Pagoda. But today we're gonna look at Luke 4, uh, verses 12 and 13, where, you know, we're kind of wrapping up the temptation of Jesus. You know, the, the, the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, and, and it was there that that Satan had tempted Jesus with a number of things. Um, and this last one, you know, in, in 412, and Jesus answered, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Now he's quoting scripture yet again. Uh, I think it's about the third or fourth time he's doing that through this temptation. So of course we can learn that the best way to battle temptation is through implanting God's word deep into your heart. But what he's quoting is from Deuteronomy 6, 16. Um, and essentially, you know, God is, is rewiring his people from slavery into functioning and living on their own. And, and so it's interesting, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. But yet in Malachi 3.10, uh, Malachi writes from the Lord, speaking from the Lord, that um, when it comes to our giving, um, that we should put God to the test. And so it kind of caused me to be in this place of, of wondering, like, okay, not to test God, but to test God. And what's the difference? And I think the, the big difference is you can test God in faith. And I think God's always up for that. God's always up for the challenge when you want to step out in faith and do something big. Or you can test God in doubt. Like, doubt, God, I doubt that you exist. Or if you come to God with doubts to test him to see if he's even real. I think, um, you know, we do serve a big God. We serve a loving God. And we serve a God that likes to show up and show off in ways that we can't account for um, when we place our faith and our trust in him. It's like the, the Malachi verse in 310. Um, honestly, I like to push against authority. If you tell me not to do something, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, it's just the way I'm wired. I think a lot of us are that way. And so when I first met Jesus, I really struggled with giving um, and understanding kind of the biblical principles and some of that until I came to Malachi 3.10, um, where it stood out to me that that's the only place in Scripture where it says that we can test the Lord. And so I started to test him through my giving. And it was amazing to see how God has shown up through all of that, you know, in ways that just frankly don't make sense. And so I, I say that to you to say that, that you know, we, it's okay. We, we can take God at his word to test God at his word. God, you say you'll never leave nor forsake me. Um, it's okay to, to take God at his word when you're trying to step out in faith um, to trust in what God says, that he's not going to leave. He's not going to forsake. He's not going to let you fall. Um, I think God's looking for people with big faith. God's looking for people to step out when it doesn't make sense because that's when God shows up in amazing, amazing ways. And so I think when it comes to testing God, sure, you can test him in doubt. It's probably not going to work out very well. Um, but I think you can test him in faith and stepping out in faith. And just remember, we have a big God that loves and gives like nobody's business. But hey, lastly, it says 
Um, and when the devil ended every temptation, you know, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that no temptation has overtaken you. Um, look, Jesus was tempted, it says in Hebrews, that he was tempted in every way as we are, yet he did not sin. Um, temptation is going to come, and temptation is not sin. So if you're tempted in a number of different ways, be reminded that the temptation is not the sin. It's when you give in to the temptation and the ways that you battle with sin is what we see modeled throughout here with Jesus um, of implanting God's word deep into your heart. That is one major way and trusting in the Lord to empower you to beat sin. Um, but I did think it was interesting that how Luke closed it out. He said he departed from him until an opportune time. And I think we, we all know when that opportune time was, and it was that night before the cross. Um, you know, it was, a fore, it was a foreshadowing of what's to come. And so, hey, y'all, thanks for, uh, for spending a few minutes with us today as we jump into Luke. We'll look forward to seeing you back next week. But, hey, we got Detroit this weekend. Please join us in prayer um, over that event, the people, as we continue to push forward here in IndyCar ministry.